I think that Dorothy was uh, somebody who invented a, a new way of being a faithful Christian in our time uh, in relation to issues of poverty, war, injustice, uh, racism, uh, uh, oppression of all, of an injustice of all kinds. Uh, she was a Catholic convert uh, who came out of a background in, in journalism and engagement in kind of radical protest around the turn of the century. And when she became a Catholic, uh, she w struggled to find some way of connecting her faith with that passion for social justice. She founded a movement called the Catholic Worker in 1933 in the heart of the Depression, uh, initially a newspaper uh, that had the mission of, of um, kind of uh, promoting the Catholic social uh, t teaching of the, of the church, uh, concern for social justice, for the workers, for the unemployed. Uh, and then pretty quickly that, that turned into uh, a practical uh, response to the needs of the, t of the time through the practice of what she called the works of mercy, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. Uh, so people began to, to come to the Catholic worker office uh, who were out of work or had no place to live and she, she opened up a house there that provided uh, shelter, housing, food, a soup kitchen for, for the hungry and a kind of gathering place for, uh, for unemployed uh, to talk about ideas. Um, but what was different about what she was, was doing uh, compared to other sort of relief work uh, of the time uh, was that there was always this uh, kind of, it was combined with a, a, a critique of the social order and uh, a vision of a, of a, of a different kind of, of social order based on, on community and justice and brotherhood. I knew her uh, at the very end of her life, the last five years of her life when she was quite old, in her uh, late 70s, early 80s, uh, and she was uh, <clears throat> Uh, effectively re retired from the day-to-day -day, you know management of, of, of the house or of the newspaper uh, but she loved to talk about ideas and about uh, learn about people she was incredibly interested in, in young people uh, she was uh, she had uh, such a youthful quality herself uh, she a uh, spirit of adventure uh, she never uh, never went into retirement in, in, in that sense. She was always in, engaged with what was happening and always ready for a fight. I mean, right up until the end of her life, she was, uh, 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 you know, refusing to pay taxes and, and, and willing to be kicked out on the street uh, in, in, in protest, uh, supporting the young people who were going to jail and various kinds of protests, uh, starting a, uh, a shelter for homeless women right at the very end of her life. Uh, so it was never done for her. You know, she was always, uh, she described her life as being on pilgrimage. That was the name of the column she wrote for the, the newspaper. Uh, and there was never any end to it. Uh, she was just very inspiring and, and fun to be around. What struck me about Dorothy and the Catholic workers was here were people, lay people, who really uh, took their faith uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as a serious guide to, to daily life, uh, not just... Uh, Kind of their religious, uh, you know, observance, uh, but but uh, had something to say about you know the matters that were in you know in the daily news and how you organize your life and how you live your life uh, in in a spirit of of love and compassion and mercy, but also uh, with a, a sense of prophetic engagement with with the issues of the day. So uh, for Dorothy, it was a you know it was a total life. Uh, I didn't appreciate as much as I did, you know, later, and especially when I came to edit her her writings, her diaries, in particular, to see uh, how much that life was rooted in day-to-day -day practice of her her faith in what people might consider very traditional ways. She rose early every morning to to uh, read the uh, <clears throat> from her breviary the the book of of of, of kind of monastic hours. Uh, she would uh, say the rosary. She went to mass every day. She took part in the kind of feasts and celebrations and fasting of, of the church uh, year. Uh, she was very engaged with the life of the, of the stories of the of the saints in the church. Um, and I think you know when I time when I went there as a young person, I focused much more on the radical activism and the the the. Uh, you know the kind of heroic stands that 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 she took on the public stage, 
uh, and I was much less sensitive to the to the ways that that was rooted in uh, in uh, you know a, a real discipline of of uh, daily participation in the sacramental uh, and uh, liturgical life of the church. What's interesting now is the way you know in the construction of the narrative uh, that is you know created in the whole process of of naming saints. Uh, that there is a, a seems to be an interest in in you know, presenting Dorothy's story as as the story of a of a kind of a great sinner or, or you know who became a great saint, uh, a Saint Augustine kind of figure, a Saint Paul on the road to Damascus has this big conversion and is a different person afterwards, and that's a is a a certain kind of you know formula for uh, thinking about the lives of saints, and so in that story, her abortion becomes. Uh, uh, a, a crucial, uh, you know, point, uh, and I think that uh, it is a significant point about her, uh, and I think that uh, Cardinal O'Connor addressed that head-on when he introduced her cause uh, uh, some years ago. He acknowledged that she'd had an abortion, and he addressed that in the context of is that an impediment to her being a saint? And he said, no, uh, no, I don't think so at all. It it shows that. Uh, I think it's a wonderful message that that uh, that there's nothing we can do that separates us from the love of God. Uh, and she regretted this, and she 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 moved on. And so he incorporated it, I think, you know, you know, you know, as an aspect of her story, and as one that was significant and might actually touch uh, people. But it was not a it was not a key central uh, theme. And I think that, of course, it plays in to. Uh, the priority that the that the bishops and that the church have have, have given to uh, to the particular a, one you know aspect of the of the pro life message, uh, the opposition to abortion, and so Dorothy, there's the potential there that she could become the kind of patron saint of of uh, people who've had uh, abortions and 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 as an anti-abortion uh, saint, uh, and that would be. Um, um, I, I think uh, a, a distortion of her, of her overall message, and I think was one of the kinds of things that she feared uh, in, in when confronted with the idea of being called a saint. Uh, having her story uh, shaped and uh, adapted, fitted to, to 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 an agenda that wasn't necessarily hers. And I think we see you know aspects of that, you know, both of those things uh, happening in her. Her life being made a, a little bit, you know, s s you know s smoothing off the rough edges a little bit, the prophetic uh, side, so that she doesn't make us uncomfortable, doesn't really challenge us. She inspires us, uh, and then you also see the, the the ways in which perhaps her message is I wouldn't say hijacked, but but adapted to to serve uh, 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 an existing agenda or or narrative that wasn't necessarily one she would claim. She had an enormous love for the church. She didn't uh, identify the church with the, the bishops and with Rome and, 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 and the Vatican. Um, for her, uh, the church, the church that really attracted her was, was the example of, of, you know, poor working class uh, people who, who worked hard all, all day long uh, for very little money, struggled to, to, to support their families. Uh, and felt this compulsion to go to to, to church on, on on Sunday, and felt that 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 in that experience they had you know the the riches of 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 a, you know, of, a of a connection and experience of the transcendent of the mystery the love of God uh, that gave some kind of meaning and order and 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 uh, transcendence to, uh, to their lives. Um, and that was something that she just, you know, had enormous uh, love for and gratitude uh, uh, for. As for the institutional kind of st uh, st uh, st structure, she recognized that they had their place, uh, but she um, she didn't expect all that much uh, in the way for, of, of, of bishops. There's there's a there's a letter that I found when I was collecting her letters where a, a prominent piece. Uh, Activist, a Catholic, said, "You know, Dorothy, I just, am, I, my faith has been so threatened by uh, the fact that the bishops are just not, you know, speaking out on Vietnam as they should, 
And she said, you know, I just have never expected that much from uh, bishops. She said, you know, we have to look to the saints. They're the ones who kind of provide a, a real touchstone for uh, what the faith means. Um, so, you know, she in her autobiography, she quoted a line by a theologian, Romano Guardini, who said that the church is the cross on which Christ is crucified. And you can't separate the Christ from his cross. Uh, she, she uh, I think that one of the reasons that, that Dorothy speaks to so many people in the church today is because she was able to bridge, uh, you know, these kind of polarized uh, factions uh, by showing that it's possible to really love the church, uh, but also be aware of its failings. It's not; it doesn't make you a disloyal Catholic if you are are critical. Uh, on the other hand, it doesn't make you. Uh, a th you know, it doesn't make you a better Catholic just because you see all the faults. Um, and uh, um, because, you know, the ultimately she didn't think of the, the church as those people out there. She thought that I, I'm as much the church as anyone. Uh, I have my own sins. I have my own failures. And her, her primary concern was, was her, own fail, her own failings and faults, uh, not, not pointing a figure at other people. There's a wonderful uh, passage in her autobiography where she describes how, as a child, a Catholic neighbor, little girl, had shown her books about the saints, and she was very inspired by them. But at a certain point, she, she was dissatisfied, and she said, uh, where were the saints to change the social order, not just to bind up the wounds of, of, you know, of, of, of the victims? Uh, where were the saints to, to do away with slavery, you know, not just to care for the slaves? Uh, so she recognized... Uh, you know, the need for a different kind of saint. And at that point, what that basically, you know, uh, proceeded was her kind of alienation from Christianity that lasted for, 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 for many years. But I, I often looked at that passage and thought, well, Dorothy, you know, in, in that insight, she kind of defined her own vocation, uh, the, the need for a, a new kind of saint in our time. Uh, one who doesn't just minister to the victims of, of society, but tries to change the social order. So that, I would say, is the kind of saint uh, she was, if you want to call her that. Uh, but she, uh, I, I really learned about the saints, you know, through, through Dorothy, uh, learned uh, from her incredible interest and devotion to their, their stories, uh, their humanity, uh, not just the legends about them, but to, to look at them in their in their social context, how they responded in faith to to the to the problems that they they, they encountered. Uh, but she also it was not just that she she looked to them for inspiration. She really uh, accepted the whole idea of the communion of saints and the idea that the saints could be uh, powerful helpers and patrons, intercessors for us. Uh, so that she would you know whenever there was. Uh, concern about paying the bills or paying for the food at the, the Catholic worker. She would, you know, pray to Saint Joseph, you know, for help. Uh, she looked to individual saints for examples of, of courage or patience or or passion for justice or for charity. She was very conscious of her own failings, her own capacity for anger, judgment, self righteousness. But it was this ongoing struggle day by day to work on those things, to bring them to confession, to try to 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 uh, reflect, you know, more a spirit of love. Uh, and she believed that all of us are called to that. That's that's why that's why we become. That's what it means to be a Christian is to be on that journey. And so she had a sense of her connection with all the other saints, canonized or not. But uh, wanted to to I think that was one of the most important messages that uh, that she had in the Catholic Worker, that what we're doing here is not just for something that saints do. Uh, this is something maybe not living in a Catholic Worker, but in your daily life, there are ways that you can you can be more charitable, you can promote justice, you can promote peace uh, around you and in the community that you live in. The church didn't make a big fuss when she died, you know, as you would think they would for the most important Catholic of, of you know, of our, of our time. Uh, the Archbishop of New York came and blessed her body uh, out, outside the church uh, for her funeral, but he did not uh, celebrate the Mass, and there were no Catholic bishops uh, attending. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I think that, that, that 
well, one could argue well, what, what that, that statement means. But I, I think that when you look at, at the other figures, the great Catholics of her time, um, whether you want to, you know, Cardinal Spellman or, uh, you know, certain Thomas Merton, uh, an important uh, a, a figure, uh, um, Fulton Sheen, uh, Claire Booth Luce was, you know, an important uh, figure. Uh, I think that all of them really, except for, for, for her friend Thomas Merton, I think you know, a lot of these people, great Catholics, will, I think, not be, you know, they're forgotten within, within, a, within a generation or they, they don't really necessarily speak very much to contemporary times. There's something about Dorothy that is, remains ever so fresh and modern because she was so engaged uh, with with all of all of the themes, the issues of our of our time, revolution and ecology, and uh, as a as a woman and the emergence of, of the role of, of, of women in society, uh, uh, as a protester, as somebody who went to jail, as somebody who was with the poor, um, and you know as a as a writer and as somebody who who spoke to the public. Uh, and and tried to inc and created a a kind of style a way of of being Catholic that continues to attract and be uh, uh, s significant inspiring to to so many young people who continue carry on with the Catholic worker today. On the question of peace, uh, the 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 whole uh, teaching of of the Church on attitude toward war has shifted steadily, steadily, steadily much closer to uh, the the position of Dorothy Day. Uh, it's still not a, uh, a pacifist uh, church by any, any means, but a, at least from the official, you know, organs of the church, much, much higher uh, um, bar uh, that 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 has to be to be uh, raised to to accept legitimacy of violence or war, uh, and that was beginning there at Vatican II, uh, when she went to she went to the council in Rome and with other women fasted for 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 ten days. Praying for the council to to address the the issue of nuclear weapons, and then she was uh, you know rewarded in effect uh, when they did uh, issue a you know a, a document in Gaudium et Spes where they said that any use of weapons of indiscriminate destruction against cities or you know uh, uh, non-combatants is a crime against humanity that should be, you know deserves unreserved condemnation. It was the only condemnation issued at the, at the Second Vatican Council. Soon after her death. Uh, the American Catholic bishops issued you know, two very significant documents, one on the economy and one on war and peace. And both documents uh, acknowledged the contributions of Dorothy Day. The one on, on, on peace was very important because it was the first time, I think, uh, an official document from the, uh, the bishops acknowledged that, that, that the pacifism of Dorothy Day, for instance, though not normative for the church, was an authentic and real, you know, uh, uh, option for Catholics uh, living out the, the the message of Jesus. I think that uh, Dorothy Day uh, is is definitely a common ground person uh, because she was able to hold in tension uh, both that incredible devotion uh, to the Church, love for the Church, engagement in the uh, liturgical and sacramental life of the Church, uh, with an awareness of, of its failings. Um, she was, uh, in that sense, I think that, you know, she, that there's something there that, that, you know, she wouldn't have liked terms like left and right or conservative, progressive. Uh, you know, when you see a person like Dorothy Day in which those kind of polarized terms don't really apply, you recognize you're in the, in, in the presence of somebody who, 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 who does provide, you know, that, that kind of uh, uh, common ground. And I think it's a, uh, it has been, I mean, at the time she died in 1980, I would have been happy if she'd been, you know, acclaimed as a saint right, right, right then. But she would have been claimed uh, by those uh, in the peace movement and those in the social justice movement. Uh, and I think she, it might have been as much of a reduction of her total message uh, as it would have been if she had, you know, only been recognized because she had an abortion and regretted it or... Uh, because she was a, a faithful, you know, daughter of the church, uh, she was all these things, and I think it's with the passage of time, uh, the decades that have passed since her death, that really her measure and her 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 true, true challenge for all of us uh, becomes becomes more clear.